with Tracy in LA. Welcome back to my new podcast, Dance Journey. Today we have my dance friend Sarah, and we're gonna get in, we're gonna get into our friendship and her dance journey. But first, we want to talk about the class we just took, which was at T Millie. Sarah's first time at T Millie. So, yes. what'd you think? I loved it. The class we took was jazz funk with Liz. Guerreri. Yeah, something like we that. We don't know how to say Wait, it, yeah. but that's her name. Liz Guerreri. I think it yeah, was actually street right. jazz. Oh, Isn't what did I say? Street? Jazz funk. Yeah, it's street. Like this, what is the difference between street jazz and jazz funk? I feel like they're similar. Yeah, I don't really know the difference. Yeah. So. Jazz funk, street jazz. Which one was it? it? I think it was street jazz. Okay, street jazz. With Liz Guerreri yeah. at T. Millie. Yeah. And you liked T. Millie? Did, yes. What was, were you shocked by anything? Did... Yeah, it was, it was different than I expected um, in terms of like when you walk in, just very nice. I don't know. It felt like nice and comforting when you walked into the studio and it just felt so cool to be in that studio because I've seen it on Instagram with all the lights and everything. And so it felt, I don't know, it felt really cool to dance in there. I think everyone in there was really inspired. I like being surrounded by people who inspire me and I don't get out of my comfort zone that often these days I feel like I feel like I used to more but now I kind of take the same few classes each week so this was really cool because like I love street jazz and hip-hop and I, I haven't done a lot of it lately and I feel like when I take a different teacher or a different style or a different studio that I'm not used to it really challenges me so yeah it was a fun challenge yeah it was I thought it was like a perfect challengingness because yeah. I was definitely challenged I did not mean to be in the front. I know I like to be in the front learning at the classes that I'm used to, but in new class, I really like to be kind of like middle back, but I went into the middle-ish and then somehow I got like pushed to the front. Yeah, but you did great. I was struggling so bad in my head and I was like, oh my gosh, why am I in the front? Why am I in the front? I really wanted her to be like, okay, everyone switch lines. And she <laughs> never did that. And I was like, I am in the front. And the, and the way that she advertised this class was she said it was final round. Yeah. And I we've never taken her before and she's all <laughs> final round. I know. It felt really fast. I don't know if that's just how the classes are taught at T. Millie. I really liked it. Like, I liked the challenge, but I was like, whoa, <laughs> I've done this fast. in a while. It was kind of fast, yeah. but she was really good about answering questions. Yeah, and was. so I was so thankful for your question because I asked one question. And when I'm in a new class, I don't actually like to ask a ton of questions. So I asked one uh -huh. and I had more, but I was like, I'm not going to. I had more too. And then Sarah asked one and I was like, oh, that was a good one. Thank <laughs> you for asking. <laughs> they got to yeah. be spread out because it is sort of like, a, we're going to keep it moving even though she asked for yeah. questions. But yeah. But she's really sweet. She did a great... Yeah, yeah. I, li I really liked her teaching style. Mm -hmm. I felt like you looked great. I have a video, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to post it. I really... Nobody was putting out videos. And when I'm in a new class, it's just like, I want to be brave enough to just put it out. Because like, what's the worst that's going to happen? They're just going to say, oh, no cameras or something. Like, that's fine. But I still get scared. I'm like, nobody else is putting it out. And like, they're professionally filming. But the thing is that <laughs> T. Millie, sometimes you don't end up getting the professional videos. And so yeah, how just, does like, it work? I don't know because every oh. time I take class at T. Millie, unless it's, unless it's the really good video that they post, uh -huh. I haven't. Well, one time when I took Cher Flair at T. Millie, she put the link for us to get the mm. videos. But I, that's never happened with any other teacher. But it sounded like we're going to get a link because she said something about like when you see the video later. Uh -huh. So hopefully we do, but I never know. So I want to put out a camera. So I didn't put it out to like the last group, like, or when she's like, everyone dance together at the end. I'm like, okay, I can slip it out really fast. First of all, I put my camera out and the freaking light flashes. <laughs> super bright. Sometimes when I press record on my camera, the, on my phone, the light just flashes, like just turns on and I don't know how to get it off. I don't know why it does that. And so I put it down into, and it ran away and I'm like, it's this bright light. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. But it blended in with the rest of the lights. Like it didn't even phase me. I, I literally, like I noticed the light, but I wasn't like, oh my God, Tracy's light is on. I was like, oh, there's so many lights in here. <laughs> there was a lot of like and professional smoke. lights and smoke. Yeah. And, um, and then like, it was so funny because the professional camera person, Oh, no, the light person, right? The light, the person holding the yes, light. Yes, yes, yes. Not So I put mine to the side, and I told Sarah, hey, let's stand on the left side because I'm going to put my phone over here. So I wasn't trying to be in the center or anything, <clears throat> but then the camera guy's in the center, but the light person, 
is standing and stands this moves over and stands right in front of my camera so it's <laughs> like literally you can see glimpses of me and sarah in between her legs and like <laughs> it's actually pretty funny it's so really funny i'm gonna post it because sarah did really good so I, did tracy i didn't get to watch because we were in the same group but um when i was watching through the legs of the light person i was like "Ooh, sarah's like killing it a little bit oh, i when i saw tracy between the legs of the people i thought the same thing about you <laughs> i was like we're doing pretty good yeah also like maybe the parts i messed up were hidden because of her so i don't really mind that <laughs> um but yeah that was really fun this is the problem with trying new classes though because then i'm like oh can i can i keep coming back to this i don't know um yeah because like it makes me want to take it makes me want to take it too but it's like oh my gosh yeah. how many classes can i take yeah so anyway, before we get into like how many classes we take and all of that kind of stuff, let's talk about how Sarah and I became friends. Yeah. Um, this is Sarah. We call her Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> because we have a friend, Sarah. Actually, Sarah, who is my first interviewee for the podcast, uh -huh. we call her Sarah because she Sarah. has an H. Yeah. And Sarah. Sarah. Sarah versus Sarah. Or maybe just regular Sarah and not Sarah. <laughs> so Sarah has no H, so we call yeah. her Sarah no H. But um, Sarah No H and I became friends <laughs> at C Spot in Culver yes. City. Do you remember? Well, I guess it was Zach's class. Yeah. Because I'm like, what other class do we I take I did there? take, like, right before Dance Line closed. Okay. I took a few classes there, which you must have been there. I Maybe? was there a little bit before it closed. Okay. Because I was not. I was injured, so I only right. came back to dance, like, shortly before dance line closed. Like, maybe a few months or Okay. Something. I started there a few months before it closed, oh, okay. too. Like, so we must have crossed paths. Probably. But we didn't, like, meet until c yeah. I think. Were you taking Zach at dance line? I, th I think I was taking his and Christian's. Oh, okay. Yeah. I probably sort of saw you there, but I don't think we, like, talked. Yeah. I had just started taking Zach and Christian's there, and I was, like, a disaster just trying to, like, hide in the... I doubt it. No. I mean, it actually was bad. <laughs> I was, but I well, liked how it. how far you've come. I'm, I feel like I have come far, but... Um, so Zach Pinto's jazz slash contemporary. He does like mm -hmm. two weeks of jazz, two weeks of contemporary. It's a really fun class. We met yeah. there. I don't remember why we started chatting. We just chatted. Yeah. I don't remember like a specific day or like what happened, but I do remember that like I had just moved back to LA from college and like I had some really great dance friends in college. And I remember coming back here and thinking like, where am I going to dance? And like, I hope I meet nice people and dance. And then actually a friend from college who I danced with told me about C-Spot. Okay. And so I remember like coming to class and not knowing anyone. I just remember you and Sarah being super friendly to me uh, and it made me feel like warm and welcome. I don't yeah. think I ever told you that. So. I know. Well, yeah. Sarah and I met at Dance Line and yeah, she was super nice to me. And then we became pretty good friends. And then, yeah, then we just, we found you or you found us. Yeah. But I will say I do have memories of how me and Sarah, this Sarah, <laughs> became better friends. And the first yes. time was because I was taking ballet at Westside. So I usually only see her at C Spot. And then I remember turning to the side on, by the bar and I was like, Oh, Sarah, <laughs> like you were at the bar with me. Yes, and it was because I usually go to see to West Side Ballet on Sundays, but oh yeah, this time and the next time that we'll probably talk about, I decided to go on Saturday, which is yeah. when Tracy goes. Sorry, it's a little <laughs> hot in here. Let, if we toasty. do need to turn the car on, let me know. Okay, I've I'm got my juice box. A little, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Even when it's not that hot outside, it gets sweaty. Yeah. It gets hot in here. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we were both taking ballet on a Saturday morning and I think she was just like, what are you doing now or something? And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to gymnastics cause Saturdays are my crazy days. So, well, I don't do gymnastics on Saturday anymore, but I used to do ballet, gymnastics, and then like jazz funk or something. And she was like, oh, I kind of want to go to gymnastics. <laughs> I was like, really? And so I just remember us being like back and forth here. We'll turn on the car. It's like a little bit. Okay. It's a little toasty in here, toasty. so we'll just get it a little low. Okay. It's a free sauna. <sighs> Whew, yeah, we did, that's true. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you wanted to go to gymnastics, yeah. and I remember you weren't sure. You were going back and forth about uh -huh. if you want to do gymnastics I think or I not. had, like, homework or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll, talk, we'll get into your homework situation, too. But, um, and then I just remember you being, like, I kept being like, okay, well, let me know if you want to go. We kept going back and forth. And then you're like, you're so good at convincing people to do things or something. And I was like, but I'm not even like trying to get you to go. I, I just said, it's okay if you don't want to go. You were like, 
No, that's why you're so good at it because you're not like <laughs> you're not pushy. You're not pushy. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it was so funny. So yeah. then, and in the middle of that, our other friend, um, Lucinda. Lucinda. We had just met her. We just met her in, in the ballet. changing room. In the changing room, and she overheard us talking about gymnastics, and yeah. she's like oh, wait, what gymnastics class is this? And then it was so funny. They both ended up coming with me. And how there are so many times in ballet that I've talked about going to gymnastics that people were like, wait, what's, where's this gymnastics really? place? So many people in ballet, like, want to do gymnastics. Have they know. come? Um, no. Mm, I don't know. Just me and Lucinda. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we have to start a ballet gymnastics class. Ballet gymnastics. Yeah. That sounds like... It, <laughs> It sounds like, like, uh oh, I don't know. Anyways, I what don't know. What does it sound ballet like? Nasty. It just sounds like kind of like dirty ballet nasties. <laughs> I can't. I don't know. Um. So, anyways, we took gymnastics. How was that? How was gymnastics for you that day? Um, it was fun. I did a little bit of like tumbling in high school. And I always wanted to be good at gymnastics. It's always, like, scared me a little bit. Um, but I love it. It was really fun. You did I really come good. back, actually. Yeah, except I don't do the group classes anymore. But oh. you should still go. Why don't you do the group I classes anymore? I do a private class now with oh, Rachel. Nice. Because I struggle a lot in gymnastics. And so I was going to the group classes and I was not progressing. Because I have a lot of fear. So Rachel's helping me with just, like, handstands. Oh, that's good. And, that's like, my problem is fear. Really? Oh, sorry. That's, that's okay. Sorry. I'm progressing more now with going slower mm. um and having just like more one-on-one -on -one attention so that's, that's been really that's good really helpful me. yeah yeah I like when I did gymnastics in the past I remember like I get in my head it's like a confidence thing like yeah it's weird I was able to do a front handspring that didn't scare me but a handstand would yeah well I think because you're just like you're yeah just straight up holding yeah. it a little bit yeah so. or like when I was when I would learn back handsprings like he would just be, like, standing there, and it would make me feel better. And then when my coach would walk away, then I'd be, like, I'd go to prep and do it. And then I'd be, like, no, I can't do it. I do that with Rachel all yeah. the time. I'll be, like, can you just stand there, even though I know you're not doing anything? Yeah. But, or she'll, like, want to do a handstand at the same time as me. I'm, like, no, can you stand there? <laughs> what if I need you? She's, like, but I'm not doing anything. I'm, yeah. like, I don't care. I just need you there. But once you get it, like, it's so good mentally yeah. to, like, get over the mental yeah. challenge. But yeah. it's hard. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And actually, I think I said that out of order because the first time we connected before that day yes. was another day that she showed up and I saw her at Westside on a Saturday morning because she switched her ballet schedule. And she also said, what are you doing today or something? <laughs> and I was like, I'm actually auditioning. It's so funny because like, I don't go on dance yeah. auditions. I think you were like, you're not even going to believe what I'm doing. It's so crazy. It's <laughs> like, it's so crazy. But I'm auditioning to be a part of the LA Sparks dance team, which, um, not to like give away ages or anything, but I already have, but like they have this, they have a regular dance crew that's part of the women's LA basketball team, the LA Sparks. And then they have an older dance team that's like 40 years and older and it's called the old school crew. <laughs> and I wasn't even 40. I actually am 40 now. I'm exactly 40. Ah! Crazy. But um, I, was I was shocked when you told me that. I was like, <laughs> I know. I try not to tell people, but now it's just out there on the internet world. So whatever. Yeah. But, but um, <laughs> you look amazing. So. Thanks. So I was 39 and the auditions for it were happening at C-Spot. So I saw some sort of like paper on the bulletin board about it or something. Mm. Or no, my roommate actually forwarded me the email because she used to work for... um the Staples Center. Oh. And so she gets these emails and she was like, you should audition for this. And she emailed it to me and I was like, um, I don't like do auditions. <laughs> but then I saw that the auditions were at C-Spot. I'm like, the auditions are at C-Spot. I should just go to that. And I talked to Susan about it, the uh -huh. owner of C-Spot. I was like, do you think I should audition for this? She's like, yeah, you totally should. Aww. Um, and she's like, oh, they won't care that you're 39. You're like almost there. You should just audition. So, and I watched some of the videos of the old school crew on YouTube and stuff. And I was like, they're pretty good, actually. I was kind of nervous to audition. But they have a regular crew, and Sarah is younger than me. <laughs> and so I was telling her the auditions for those are were the same day, too. And so what did you think? You yeah. Like, so, well, for, my first thought was, like, you're not 40, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thought. <laughs> my second thought was, like, huh, 
that sounds kind of fun. <laughs> and so I feel like I have, I've never done like a professional dance audition like that. I've done like, I grew up doing dance competitions. So okay. I did a lot of like, every year I'd have to audition to be on the competition team. And I've had to do like auditions to be in dance companies. Okay. And, um, like That's at our, a lot of auditions. Though. Yeah, yeah. Ne- but it was never for like a paid dance job. Okay. But I do, I feel like I, in my past, I've had experience auditioning. And even like when I was um, a little bit younger, we would have like mock auditions at my studio and things like that. But now I was out of college, but I was kind of like, well, I'm in LA. Why not do some dance auditions? Like yeah. I've always kind of thought like it could be fun to, to dance. Um like professionally like that so when you told me that and and my oh I keep hitting this that's Sorry. okay my some of my teachers growing up <clears throat> always taught me that like when you go to an audition just have fun the worst thing that happens is you get a free dance class so like when you told me that again I I had homework <laughs> so I was like hmm this sounds really fun and also scary and also I have homework but I'll think about it <laughs> Um, but it, but I was kind of like, why not? Sounds kind of fun. And it also inspired me that you were doing it too. So then I went home and I was living with my brother and I was telling him about it and him and my parents always like encouraged me to do things. So he was like, yeah, why not? You have nothing to lose. Like, just do it. It'll be fun. So yeah, that's what I thought about it. I I can't remember. Was your audition first or my audition was first? Yours was first. Okay. Cause you were... So I went to the older people audition first and honestly I had so much fun at that audition like it was fun. It was a little intense like the coach was um oh gosh what is her name um oh, I want to say like Ebony or something oh I'm blanking on her name but she's a really good dancer coach and she was, like, fun, but she was really pushing us, like, stomp harder, da-da-da. Like, I was like, oh, man, yeah. I had never danced that hard. I mean, it was hip-hop, which I also wasn't taking a ton of hip-hop at the time, like, a little bit. But then I was, I was doing hip-hop, which is a little different for me, and then I was, like, trying to, like, do it as full out as possible. My feet were hurting. I was giving it, like, everything. And I went, I got through, like, three rounds or something. Yeah, you made it And I it was to texting the... Sarah. Yeah. Yeah, I ended up getting called back. It wasn't like, I think half of us that went got called back. So, I mean, it was it was a big deal for me, but I also... It's a huge deal. Yeah, they were like, and but when they told us we were all getting called back, like the ones they called in at the end, they were like, basically like, we're calling you guys all back, but we also want to tell you that we didn't see anything amazing from any of you. I didn't know they said <laughs> not that. Like, not like, I'm probably making it more dramatic than it was. It wasn't like exactly like that, but it was something like they were planning to teach us a new combo for the callback, but they were like, because we didn't get exactly what we wanted tonight, we want to give you guys time to work on it and come back and like bring us everything you can for this mm. combo. So I was like, oh, wow, I'm going to have to do homework. But like I was excited, but I was actually kind of nervous because I was like, shoot, I don't, I mean, I had my full-time job at the time and I was like, oh my gosh, what if I actually make it? (laughs) I didn't really think that I was, I just thought I'm going to get audition experience. I didn't really think I was going to get like called back. And I was like, what if I actually make it like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to like talk to my work because I'm going to have to leave early for like these game days because they had given us all the details of the schedule. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was thinking about you and I was like, how does Sarah have, how would Sarah have time? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing too. (laughs) Because you're, like, in school, yeah. and oh, my gosh. So, anyway, that was my experience, but I was, like, texting Sarah, and I was, like, it's really fun, but oh, my gosh, it's, like, hard, and blah, 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 and I remember she was being, like, what, what what are people wearing? Yeah, and I was like, so nervous about what to wear and, like, how to wear my hair. <laughs> and I was, like, not thinking about that at all, which I probably should have been, but I was, like, just, no, just be good. you. Just wear whatever. Even I'm, like, telling her that, like, as if I know anything about auditions. No, but, she, you like, you were telling me your updates, and I was, like, oh, my God, Tracy, like, you're killing it. I was so excited for you. <laughs> Um, so then how was your, how was your audition experience? Okay. So it was a lot harder because I was dancing with the older people and I was on the younger side and they were really good dancers though. But like she was dancing with the legit, like young people well, who yours were, were really legit. Good. They're legit too, but it's not, wasn't quite as hard as like the <laughs> regular crew. I don't know. But so I remember like we needed to bring a headshot. Did you have a headshot? Well, for ours, they just said, bring any picture it doesn't it literally oh, said it doesn't need to be a headshot which is part of the reason I went because I was like okay I literally just found a picture and like blew it up 
because oh. I didn't even have one. Okay, so for us, we had to have a resume and a headshot. And I luckily like had a dance resume from other like dance teaching okay. job stuff. So I had that, and I like went home and fixed it up a little. And I remember I had homework, and I was like, I'm just gonna do my homework really quick. And like, even if I don't get it all done tonight. Like, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's okay. And it was, like, a Saturday, so it's still a Sunday. <laughs> and then I had to, I remember, like, I had a headshot. It just wasn't printed. So I had to stop at, like, CVS on the way and, like, get it printed. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, then I remember there were a lot of people. Was yours really crowded? It Ours probably had, like, 50 people or something. Okay, yeah. I think ours had more. It was like your probably had in there. More. Yeah. So we did like a warm up and we started learning the combo and it like it was really intense, but it was really fun. And I think in previous times when I've done auditions, it's been for things um like like the dance company in college or like scholarships at dance competitions where I've been like really nervous and I kind of get in my head when I'm nervous sometimes. But this time when I went, I was just like so happy to be mm. dancing and doing hip hop because I love hip hop and I, I hadn't done it in a while actually. So I was just like super excited and in my head I was like, oh, I haven't done hip hop in a while. Like I probably won't make it. I'm just going to go and have fun. I'm just yeah. going to have this free dance class. So, but like I went hard, like everyone went hard. It was like really intense, but really fun. And I was actually surprised and how nice and encouraging everyone was. Yeah, the, it, yeah. Uh, mine too. People yeah. were, I asked this one guy to help me with this step I wasn't figuring out, and he was, like, super nice to show yeah. me stuff. Yeah, I, I I was worried it'd be more, like, competing with each other, which we, we were, kind of, but everyone was super nice and encouraging. And then, yeah, I remember, so, like, we would do the combo, and then they would, like, call people back, and then they would cut. Mm -hmm. So I remember they called me back a few times. Which and, is awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. And I remember I was like getting really tired though. Yeah. But then they made their first cut and I made it through the first cut. Wow. And then, then at that moment I was like, oh my God, like I, I actually maybe have a chance. Like what? And so then I started to get nervous in yeah. my head. Yeah. And so then we learned another combo. And by now, because ours was after yours, so our, I remember ours started at, like, 6, and we didn't leave till, like, 11 or something wow. like that. And I remember I was getting really tired, and so then we did it the second time, and then I remember getting called back a few times, and I felt less confident about the second combo. Still so much fun, but I think I was getting, like, tired and nervous, and you yeah. could kind of see it. And then I remember after doing it, I don't know how many times I did it, but then I remember like going back into like the holding area and thinking like, oh my God, if I do this again, I'm actually going to throw up. Like I was going <laughs> so hard. I actually was nauseous. Like I was afraid I would oh, literally man. throw up like <laughs> in front of the judges. And then like 10 minutes later, they made their cut and they cut me. And I was actually like... <laughs> I was like, thank God. <laughs> it was so much fun. It would have been amazing to, like, get to the next round. And I remember a lot of other dancers that got cut were, like, real, like crying and really Aww. upset. And I was like, wow, I made it past a few rounds. Cool. <laughs> but I, I think the difference was that the other dancers, like, were really relying on this. I think a lot of them were, like, true professional dancers. So, like, their income relies yeah. on stuff like this. So yeah. it, it hit them a little bit more. Um, but it was so much fun. Yeah. I was so grateful that you told me about that. It was really fun. But yeah. I will say, like, your experience you had towards the end of the night was kind of the experience I had at the callback. Because mm. I almost didn't go to the callback. I had a conflict with it, actually. And that was the next day, It was right? the next so, day. So Tracy made it to the next day where they did yeah. interviews, right? And I made yeah. it to the last round of the first day but got yeah. cut before the So I day. made it through the few rounds of the first day and went to the you callback. You made it so close. But, so I stayed up. I mean, I didn't stay up super late, but I worked that whole night on the combo to make it perfect. They actually posted a video of it, so mm. I really tried to get every nuance and put my own style. I faced every side of my room doing it, like not like this wall, that wall. I was, See, I really that's was so like, good. I'm gonna have so this hard. so clean. But then, and I was excited about the callback, so I had a conflict with the callback. But I was like, oh, come on, Tracy, this is like once in a lifetime opportunity. Just go to the callback. Even though I was like, I literally don't know if I can do this with my job. <laughs> but I, I think I can. I don't know. So anyways, I went to the callback. I 
was really excited at first and everyone was in the room that w- the, where we weren't auditioning, like mm-hmm. the other room. Mm-hmm. And we were all just like practicing together. And it was like fun. We're all practicing together. But then they're doing interviews, group interviews, right? But they were kind of taking a little while. Well, I will say that we practiced that dance so many times in that room. And those interviews took so long. We were just there for like hours. And they were group interviews? They were group interviews, but it was like you did answer all personal questions. And they did take time, but they were technically, they were group interviews. Like maybe seven of us at a time or something. Wow. And, but then they started taking groups of dancers in. But somehow I ended up in the last group of dancers. So everyone's getting getting to go. And I'm like, and I've now practiced it like 300 times. Like, I know it so well. I shouldn't have kept, I should have stopped practicing at some point. It gets to a point where you, your brain gets fried and you start second guessing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a mix of that and then a mix of, a mix of me being kind of tired of the dance because I did it too many times. And then a mix of being like unsure if I even want this job because Mm. I don't know if it's going to work with my schedule. And then, um, this woman who I think was trying to be encouraging, like everyone was really encouraging to each other, but she knew that I still hadn't gone yet. So everyone's like relaxed because everyone already did it. And I'm over here with the last few people, like still trying to practice. I mean, it had been like six hours of just like practicing. And this woman, and a lot of these people were already in it the previous year. That's the other thing. It's also hard because you're kind of competing against people that have like Mm -hmm. done it for years. Yeah, because they have a set amount of spots, but half of them are pretty much already filled. Yeah, Yeah. like they have to re-audition, but... um, most likely they're going to get it if they've done it yeah. before. But it is good. I like, I like standing next to those people. Because they and knew like, what they were doing and they're yeah. inspiring. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. But so this one woman who had done it before, because a lot of them had, she, I really think she was sincerely trying to encourage me, but it actually got me really stressed because she, oh. she was like, make sure you just like, like she was trying to help me do good, but she was like kind of telling me to like, do it even harder, which I think she's right. They really wanted us to do it really hard. But honestly, I had just done it like 80 times and and I'm trying to kind of just practice on my own, but she's kind of watching. She was like, just really do it hard. And I'm like, literally like, I think I'm going to pass out because I've just been (laughs) doing this for so long. And then, but then not only did she say that, which also got me a little stressed. Then she was like, you know, if you get in this, like, um, there's no, I don't know. I really don't know if she was trying to help me or not. (laughs) Like, was she trying to get in your head? I'm going to be honest. Maybe she wasn't trying to help me. I'm just trying to be nice. (laughs) But she was basically like, I don't even remember who she was or anything. But she said something like, um, if you get in this, just like, there's no downtime. Like, you're dancing, like, the whole game. It's not like you just go out. I mean, she was saying it with, like, a smile, like, it's fun. Uh But she wasn't saying it like, oh, you're going to hate it. She was just like, oh, it's, like, crazy. Like, we stay excited the whole time. We're cheering the whole time. We're we're dancing on the sides the whole time. We're just, like, a lot of energy. I think she was just trying to tell me, like, you have to have a lot of energy. Like, put the energy in because that's all we mm-hmm. do. It's just, like, energy, energy. But as she was talking to me, I was just like, oh, that sounds horrible. <laughs> I was like, oh, I think she, I think she truly liked it and thought it was fun and was trying to just hype me up about it. But I was like... Oh my gosh, wait, you're dancing the whole time and then you're like cheering the whole time and like jumping up and down for like four (laughs) hours. I was like, I don't know. Like, you're going to need to learn to drink some coffee. I'm like, I'm like, I normally do like contemporary. I don't even do this style very much. So I just got in my head about it. And like, um, I was so stressed out. I was stressed out about doing a bad job. I was stressed out about doing a good job because I didn't, wasn't sure if I wanted to take the job. And, um, I didn't want to quit some, I didn't want to like turn it down if uh-huh. I got it. Cause I would have just felt so weird and bad mm-hmm. about that. So I was really in my head. And when they called us out, I don't know what happened. I had it. Or when they called us in for the audition, I had like an out of body experience, uh-huh. but basically like I was with people who I felt like, I don't know. I felt like they weren't doing it super clean. I don't know if they were or not, but it was like a triangle and they were kind of in the front and I was kind of in the center in the back, mm-hmm. I think. And I, after the first two seconds, I just completely, I blanked out and just forgot all of it. <laughs> Even oh. though I had just done it like 700 times. Yeah. It happens though it when just, your brain I just is fried stressed. and you're all in I your head. I didn't even like know if I wanted to do good. So it was like this weird feeling. But I did try to get back in it. But because 
some people when they're dancing, they're putting so much of their personality into it, which they might have been doing, that I couldn't, I wasn't even sure what part they were on. I, mm. I couldn't like jump back in. I couldn't follow them for some reason. And I just, I was a complete disaster. And so, yeah, I definitely got cut. I feel like the (laughs) mental game is such a big part of it. Like, like, I, like, I feel like half of dance is like being confident in your, and, and when your brain is fried and you're getting in your head and you just did it like 20,000 times. Yeah. I, so I think that's part of the experience. Like, (laughs) yeah, going on more auditions will probably eventually help you with that. Just like. There's so many different aspects about dance that are difficult, not just learning the moves. Yeah, exactly. It's like the pressure and all of that you have to get used to. Mm -hmm. And these people, like like you said, the actual dancers that are like counting on that for their income, they're auditioning hopefully all the time or they're also performing more. And so they've been through those nerves a million more Mm -hmm. times. So I do think they have a little more experience at that. But it was really – I'm glad that I experienced it. Um, I was also really glad to not get it. I was like, oh, phew, okay. Like, <laughs> I don't even think that was for me. <laughs> but free it, dance class. It was a free dance class. Lots it of was fun. really fun. I was bummed that I didn't get to like show what I had worked on because yeah. I worked so hard I, yeah. to get it perfect. Yeah. And to just completely do worse than I did the first day was just kind of like embarrassing and like, why <laughs> did that happen? <laughs> But anyways, it was, it was also just experience. really fun that we got to, like, do it together. So I felt like yeah. I bonded with Sarah because we yeah. were just, like, chatting about it so yeah. much, even though we didn't do it, like, exactly together. But, like, but... it felt like we were. Yeah. So it felt, I felt less alone than I would have yeah. if we were doing it separate. Yeah. So that was really fun. So I, okay, what I think is interesting is that you went to that dance audition because uh-huh. you're doing a totally different thing with your life. <laughs> so I was like, how does Sarah have time for this? So. Tell me, tell us, Sarah, what you're kind of doing okay. with your life. Okay, so something about me is that I have many interests, so I try to fit it all in. <laughs> um, you definitely do, do try to fit it all in. It's kind of hard. Um, I'm working on it, like choosing focuses. But anyway, I like what I'm doing right now, and like yeah, my like what? Yeah, talk about your transition. What's happening now? Okay, so I applied to medical school, and I'm starting medical school in July. So right now, I'm working on my fitness startup company that I've been working on technically since like 2019. Okay. Um, but we've we've changed a bit since then. So. That's like my full time thing, and then I'm working part time two days a week in my dad's pain management office okay. as a medical assistant. Okay, and then the rest of my time, I try to dance as much as possible and enjoy life. I don't know. But you were like <laughs> studying to get into oh, school. Oh yeah, so yeah, when Tracy and I met was when I was still like in the process of like school and applying. So I had to do this. I was a business major in college, so I had to do this um, pre-med, post-baccalaureate program, it was called, and that was in L.A. at Loyola Marymount, so that was, that was accelerated, so I was, I was, for some reason, chose the accelerated program, which was getting all my prerequisites in 14 months, and studying for the MCAT, which is the test to get into medical school, um, so that was crazy. I think academically that was the biggest challenge I've ever had. But dance has always been like what grounded me. I just have to stop hitting this. I keep touching my <laughs> <It's okay>. heart. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I, I always, like even when I'm in medical school, I want to keep dancing because life is sad without it. <laughs> I know. It's like, yeah. I've I just always been so impressed with Sarah because she's a Aww. really good dancer. Aww, I'm so always sweet. inspired by her in class. Aww. But then when I got to know her, she's all like, yeah, I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's not fair that Sarah is that good of a dancer and Aww, she's that smart. Sweet. <laughs> you're not allowed to be all of that. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm just inspired. I was like, wait, you're studying for this huge test and then you come to, but you would say like, oh, dance is kind of like it's good for me to force myself to go to dance to have, like, a break because there's, yeah. like, so much studying yeah. and all of that, which is so funny because I'm, like, but dance is, like, hard, but... Yeah, well, it's funny you say that because, so my dance professors in college, um, one of them I'm still very close with, actually, but they would always say, because I was a dance minor, and people would say all the time, oh, dance is my break, and they would say, well, dance is still, like, mentally challenging. You're still yeah. using your brain, and you're still 
it's like academic still and you're being creative so it's a it's a break from learning it's just like using a different part of your brain but it is so nice to like step away from science and dance yeah <laughs> yeah and what talk about what kind of got you into this medical path Ooh, okay that goes that goes way back well Tracy. <laughs> i mean okay i could ask specific question but like doesn't it relate to dance and yeah things? yeah a little bit okay so basically well just a little short summary of going way back so my dad is a doctor i've always been super interested in what he does and what he knows like i i don't like this sounds so dorky but like sometimes when he has to take his board exams and i see the questions he's studying i'm like i want to know that <laughs> no that's cute um but anyway i feel like growing up my my parents would be like oh being a doctor is so stressful like do something more oh really fun. yeah so they like try to get you to do it no not at all like my dad and i actually did musical theater together growing up and like wait how did you do it together there was like a all ages musical like a theater. community yeah theater thing yeah oh my gosh that's cute yeah so i feel like my my dad actually now that i think about it pushed the arts a little bit. not pushed but encouraged which is wait very what nice. was one of the shows you and your dad did. oh my god this is when i was like six years old we did uh charlie and the chocolate factory cute yeah we did what were your guys parts okay and that i was i was literally like six years old i had two parts i was an oompa loompa so nice. i had to wear like a fat <laughs> suit is really cute <laughs> and i was also a hershey kid oh nice there was like okay. a whole section where like all the kids were chocolates and they sang I think my dad was the spy so there was a point I remember when he like picked me up and ran off like he you know how like in the movie he like steals the chocolate so he stole me and the music. okay oh my gosh that's cute <laughs> and then what else we did Annie Aww. I was an orphan I don't remember what my dad was that's so cute that you yeah. did it together though yeah and we did Peter Pan Aww. Things I was like in Peter that. Pan, too. Oh, what was, were you in Peter Pan? Well, I was in junior high, and I was Wendy. Oh, that's so it cute. It was a community theater thing. Aww. Yeah. I could see you but being I a good Wendy. But I didn't do it with my dad. <laughs> my favorite part, I think, was the part where Wendy got to be dead. And, like, literally, I just laid on the stage. I I, I was really busy as a kid, and I, I was tired all the time. Yeah, I'm sure. I was like, I kind of like this part where I just lay down yeah. on the stage. Yeah. Sounds nice. <laughs> Um, and also, like, the part where we're supposed to be flying, they had these little mini trampolines behind our beds, and we would be like, I'm flying, flying, but okay, it was, Okay, my like, Peter Pan wasn't that cool. <laughs> oh, really? Because I thought, and we always would joke and be like, I'm jumping, jumping, because we're like, this does not look like we're flying. It's so funny. <laughs> I'm jumping. Why? Because um, you guys didn't have... No, actually, maybe they did have, like, you the probably rope had something real. I just didn't have that part, because I was just, like, a little, oh, yeah, little yeah, yeah. lost boy or something. Yeah. Lost That's girl. so cute, though. Yeah. Okay, so that was a... So Oh, tangent, sorry, but, digression. Okay, so. Um, okay, so anyway, I was just always really interested in the sciences. But your dad tried to kind of push you towards the arts or something like less stressful. Yeah, yeah. It like I feel like my parents never tried to like push me. They just let you do whatever. Yeah, but it. I but it was just a kind of in my mind. I was like, oh yeah, being a doctor is too stressful. I'm okay. not going to do that. Um, but I, I loved like science and high school and everything a little like dorky in that note. And then, so in college I was a business major and I, long story short, like throughout college, I kind of was back and forth on what I wanted to be. There were like a lot of different directions I wanted to go with my life and I, I was just trying to figure it out. And then I think what really contributed to me wanting to become a doctor was, well, it was like a combination of things. So I, for one, when I was in high school, I got really into working out. And so I became a personal trainer in college and I really loved, there's a lot of science you have to learn to become a personal mm -hmm. trainer. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. And I, I'm super interested in like the mechanics of the body and physiology. And I feel like growing up and in college, actually, my dance teachers were very, they like to educate us about the muscles and the oh, cool. bones and all of that yeah so that was always very interesting to me um and then junior no sophomore year of college I basically had an overuse injury from dance and I had to have this huge hip surgery which took me out of dance for like 
I mean, I wasn't completely healed until like a year later. Um, but my, my doctor helped me like get back to where I was. Like I was so scared. I wouldn't have my flexibility again, which I don't think it's quite exactly where it was, but it's like pretty darn close. Um, yeah. So I think like in so the you back, didn't, of, you didn't dance at all for a year, or did you a little bit? No, I did. So oh, you did. Yeah. So you want me to go into that? Yeah. Okay. So basically, I, um, so I was very involved in in dance at Cal, po- Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, so where I went to college, mm-hmm. and so I was a dance minor there, and basically, so I had been having hip pain for a while since like high school but I didn't know what it was I was just like oh dancers have hip pain and then and you danced like most of your life because you were doing those little musicals when you were little yeah and then... well dance was my main thing like I, okay. I was dancing I started dancing at like three years old okay and then I started competing at like six wow <laughs> yeah okay. yeah so I was it, so the, the musical dancing. yeah the musicals were just like a few here and there um I think it was for like a few years when we did it but yeah Lots of, like, very intense dance. And so I remember in high school is when I started having hip pain. And then um, I had tried, like, you know, resting it and, like, nothing really. And I don't don't like sitting out. Like, if I'm sick or I'm injured, like, I still try to dance because, I don't know, I'm just, it's too boring sitting out, you know. (laughs) Um, So then in, yeah, so I remember freshman year of college, I... Every time after, I loved my ballet class actually in college. Like I absolutely loved it, but it would cause a lot of pain in my hip Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't tell my teacher. I don't know. I don't know why I was weird about like not wanting people to know. I didn't want them to feel like sympathy for me. I don't know. (laughs) And I remember calling my parents on the walk back to my dorm every time after ballet and like crying that my hip was hurting, which is like, Mm -hmm. it it was normal for me to cry that I was homesick, (laughs) but not normal for me to cry about pain. Um, So I ended up like... Long story short, eventually figured out what was wrong with it. So I had a labral tear and extra bone in the ball of my hip. So um, tried to get it better without surgery with like physical therapy and little procedures and that didn't work. So then, but I was still very involved in dance. And so I hadn't, and they had a dance company at Cal Poly, but I hadn't, I didn't audition for that my freshman year. I wanted to audition my sophomore year, but that's when I needed to have my hip surgery. Mm -hmm. So I had my hip surgery and my dance professor, Diana Stanton, she was so sweet and let me enroll in, I took um, body awareness, it was called, which is basically, I don't know how to explain that class. It's like Oh, you have to take it to know. like <laughs> it's just like it's body awareness like <laughs> it's like did you actually do movement yeah but okay. like it was I, I sat and watched a lot but okay. I learned from it and I, I had a little journal where I would write things down I heard or I would like literally I'm not an artist I would draw like stick figures of the dancers but like okay. I would just like try to observe things and like draw things like that and like as I started to get a little better I could participate a little bit because we okay. would do activities that weren't like super movement heavy okay um, but yeah, I remember kind of like limping around the room and wanting to participate. Aww. Yeah. And then I took, um, the other class was, as I was starting to get better, was, uh, teaching methods for dance. It was called teaching methods for dance minors. So we were learning how to teach dance. Um, so that also, I remember for the assignments, we would like partner up. So like it was better cause I had a partner. So I was still involved in the dance community which was really important Mm -hmm. for me because I think like mentally that's what got me through that because it was Mm. a really hard time for me but my dance friends and my dance professors were so supportive and one of my dance teachers had just had the like the year before she had the same hip surgery as me so like that was crazy so she could help like prepare me for it yeah yeah so Yes. So to answer your question, I was, I was still involved in dance. And then, and then every year Cal Poly has a spring dance show and I wasn't healed enough to be a dancer in it. But I remember I really like tap also. And 
I love tap too. Yeah, I'm not so taking fun. it right now. Everyone know, keeps saying they no... love tap, and I'm like, why aren't we all taking yeah, it? But, yeah, we need to find a place to, to take it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, my friend Madeline, we had. I think she started this. It was tappy hour. And it was... <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah. So it was like we would tap on Fridays. A lot of time it was literally just us too. <laughs> but I remember she, I think she was a year or two older than me. And she had choreographed in the spring show before. You could like audition choreography. And she asked me if I wanted to choreograph tap with her, which Aww. I thought was so sweet. Because tap didn't really bother your hip very much. It did a little bit, but I, it was creative about like choreographing with my hands okay. or like but I did use I, okay. I was a, able to use my feet eventually so we ended up choreographing a piece for the spring show wow which was really and cool then did you and dance special. in it too I did actually okay. so that was the one dance I was um, in I just kind of put myself in the back corner in case I ever needed to like take myself out yeah. or something but I was able to do it so that was really special so I think I think that helped get me through the whole hip thing yeah but I feel like that was a tangent you were asking yeah. me about the doctor thing well what was I asking you about I think (laughs) you you were asking like how I decided I wanted to be a doctor oh yeah so this is part of it that's why okay okay that was part of it yeah and I wanted you to talk about the injury okay yeah so yeah I think like I don't know if that was actually like a defining moment but I think it did like turn something on on in my brain going through that that was like huh maybe I do want to be a doctor and I did have friends from high school that were going on to become doctors and I remember in the back of my mind feeling a little bit like oh I kind of wish I was doing that um but then a year after my hip surgery is when I started my fitness company and so that gave me the that was still when I was like not completely healed and the like the working as a team and creating a company gave me the same like joy and energy that dance did Mm. I don't want to say the same they're different but it brought me a lot of joy so it was like oh my god I I found something that I could see myself doing forever and so but that combined with my hip surgery I think is what led combined with my dad um and seeing everything he did led me to wanting to go to medical school because um Again, with my fitness company, I was so interested with, like, the body and the mechanics of it and how it works. And I just, like, kept feeling like I need to learn more. I want to learn more. Like, Mm. it sounds so dorky, but I just... No, that's awesome. Like, I want to learn as much as I can about the body. And if if you're going to medical school, then you're going to learn that, so... (laughs) Well, that, I think yeah. that's amazing. I, I love that there are dancers who also want to learn everything about the body because, thank God, then we can have, like, good physical therapists and people <laughs> like that. Wait, what are you actually trying to do with your yeah, medical so, degree? I can't remember. So I want to be a doctor. I don't know what kind yet, but I would love to work with dancers. So yeah. I think I think it'd be really cool to be an orthopedic surgeon yeah. because it'd be cool. I think there's a lot of dancer injuries that – they end up going to orthopedic surgeons for and I went to a few surgeons before I found the right one for my hip and I remember some of them like I don't know it just felt like they didn't understand dancers Mm, like they would say oh you're too flexible or like just stop dancing forever and it's like well that's like that's my life and (laughs) yeah and also I think it's just helpful to have someone who understands yeah what dancers go through and all of that. So I think it'd be really cool. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Cause when I had my injury for mm-hmm. like a year and I was seeing so many different doctors yeah. and people, I mean, it's so nice when they actually understand mm-hmm. there, there were some doctors that worked with a lot of dancers who kind of knew, but to have someone that was actually a dancer, which I did have a little bit of that as well, mm-hmm. but I do think we need more of those in the world. That yeah, like, I think so too. Our dancers yeah. can understand like anybody who worked in the medical field, who was a dancer and understood like how much Mm -hmm. we love it and how much of a part of our lives it is. Like it was so much nicer to work with them, especially if they're smart and know what they're talking about too. Mm -hmm. So they're not only helping you with your body, but they also understand the whole mental, emotional part of it. And also you're going to take more time to understand the dancer's bodily Mm -hmm. needs and medical needs because that's your more intricate or more specific passion yeah so I think that's amazing I'm like so excited you're doing that I was gonna ask you like well first of all Sarah 
is going to medical school, ah. which means she's leaving. That's why I, I had to get her podcast interview in because I'm makes me sad. Cry. I like think about I'm, it. I, yeah, I think it hasn't totally hit me yet. Like me neither. Because when are you leaving? July. July. And it is, um, I haven't almost April. I literally am like, time is like, I don't know. It's every day. I don't know what day it is. Yeah. Today it's almost April. Um, so that's like coming up. So hopefully she can try to dance with us as much as possible before she leaves. But, um, and you're going to Florida. Yeah. Um, probably, but I'm still like, we're not sure. Yeah. But (laughs) likely, but not for sure. (laughs) But, um, I was going to ask you if you had any specific dance, like, dreams. Right now, it seems like your dream is kind of just to, like, keep dancing and use it towards, like, the specific medical career you're maybe looking into. But did you – you've danced your whole life. So when you were younger, did you want to just, like – was there a time when you wanted to just be a professional dancer or do something specific with dance or, like – Yeah, so that's a good question because I still think about this all the time because dance has always, it sounds so cheesy, but like dance has always been my passion. I've always loved it. It's always made me so happy. Um, And I think when I was younger, I was actually trying to think about this the other day. Like I, I remember just loving dance and, but I also always loved school Um, so it was always in my mind that I was going to go to college and continue dancing. Um, but I actually, during college, I still think about this, really wanted to be a dancer on a cruise ship. And I was thinking like, oh, maybe the year in between, um, like college and med school, I could like be a dancer on a cruise ship. That would Um, be awesome. Yeah. But yeah, any... I think it'd be fun to, like, I don't know, if I ever, like, if there's more auditions, like, those spark, the L.A. Sparks or something, like, I think it'd be cool to just have some dance job. I I don't have a lot of, a lot of time, but I also have taught dance, um, and that really brings me joy. So I think even, like, in med school or after, if I could just, like, teach dance on the side, that would be fun, um... I was just thinking about something funny about my dance dreams, and now I'm like, ah, what Have you, was but it? you've never auditioned to be on a to be a dancer on a cruise. No, because I feel like I know a lot of. I've met people out here that yeah. have danced on yeah, cruises. Yeah, I've met. I know some too. I went on my first cruise mm-hmm. of my life and saw the dancers, and I was like, ooh. I mean, I don't know that I love cruises after that experience. Like, I it, I had a good experience. It was fun. But I don't know that I would be like, oh, yeah, I want to go on cruises all the time. And so I'm like, if I was I a dancer cruises. on a cruise, yeah, so that's helpful. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, then you're really on a cruise yeah. for a long time. For yeah. Like how, I don't know. It's probably like, a, is it, it like depends. a few months or it could be like eight it months? It could be how a year. Okay. I think it's anywhere from three months to a year. Yeah. So, so that's like you need to enjoy yeah. being on a cruise. Yeah. So. But I do actually have a funny story about yeah. the dance dream. Okay. okay. So I well, okay, this doesn't have to do with the story, but I remember like my my dance teachers in college, we had dance journals that we would like journal about our dance okay. experience every week or something. And I remember writing like I love dance more than I ever have, which I didn't think was possible. I was just loving it in college. Well, COVID was a whole other thing. <laughs> but anyway, I remember thinking, like, I don't know what I want to do with it, but it just, like, it makes me happy. I think as long as I can keep dancing, I'm happy. But anyway, so... Was that before or after your injury that you wrote that? I think it was before. Yeah. Um, But anyway... Oh, so the studio I grew up at, Redder's Academy of Dance, um, I loved it. But Which was where? In Agora. Okay. So L.A. County, but not, okay. like, L.A., L.A. Um. So they had something called the, uh, maybe they still have it, called the Bridge Company, which is where I think people would come on scholarships from, like, different states even. And it's, like, to bridge the gap between, like, the amateur and the professional world. So they, people would come every year and they would, you know, give them, like, makeovers and get them business cards and help them get them professional dance jobs. Yeah, and for me, it was never on my radar, I was always like, I'm going to go to college. And so when I went to college, 
I ended up loving it. Spoiler alert. But <laughs> freshman year, I was really homesick. And thank God I, I finally, like, I, I did find my dance community there. But at the beginning, it was hard for me. And I really missed my dance community from back home. <laughs> I remember, like, when I was really upset about everything, I sent my the owner of my dance studio this long email that was like, I made a mistake. Aww. I should have done bridge company. Can I please Aww. come back? I'll do community college. I just want to like dance and like, I don't know. It was just this whole. Were you dancing your freshman year of college? Yeah, I was. But you still felt that way. Yeah, which that ended up going away because my dance community in college was better than I could have expected. It was just like hard switching communities yeah. at first when you didn't know people. Exactly. Or, yeah. And I was homesick yeah. and all of that. So anyway, I sent this long email to my to the owner of my studio and she was always very like she's she come she's very wise <laughs> and she would always you know give us life lessons and she was very she also would make sure that school was really important like she wanted she would always say like um there's a stigma that dancers are stupid and she would say to break that stigma show that dancers are smart be smart dancers so i so i sent her that long email and then she emailed back and she was very concerned and she was like I'm so sorry you're feeling like that and just try to like um I don't remember exactly what she said but but it was along the lines of enjoy college while you're there not everyone gets that opportunity mm. and you should really take advantage of that opportunity and make sure you're learning and like she knew me and she knew that I liked learning and um she told me to like find dance there and she said when you finish college, if you still want to do bridge, I'll still be here. <laughs> and I'm really glad that she uh. said that because um, rather than being like, yeah, come home right now. Yeah. Because I'm so I'm so happy I stayed and found my dance community there and just my whole experience. So but that was, that's just a funny story yeah. because it was never like on my radar. But <laughs> yeah. And I love that even when you got injured or when you had to get the hip surgery you were still able to like keep with the community and yeah totally you still went to like because you were probably only actually mm -hmm. out for like a short was it with a surgery were you just out for like a week or two or something no it was actually a very brutal I've never had an injury or anything before but this was I had it I had the surgery at the beginning of winter break and I think winter break was about a month long and then our college was in quarters. Okay. And this was before COVID, but I had to actually take two classes online because oh. I was very immobile. Oh, so okay. I was really not mobile probably for like three months. Oh, wow. Maybe it was less. I, I was able to walk and stuff. I, I mean, I was off crutches after like three, four weeks, but okay. I, it was hard for me to like walk far distances which is very humbling when you're an active person yeah yeah so but I remember you mentioning with your foot that you felt like you became better after yeah. and I kind of felt like that too in wow. a way well right after is when I felt the least confident I felt so not confident in myself like my my quad was half the size that it used to be because mm. all the muscles were gone and like I had in my head oh I haven't danced in so long so my confidence really wasn't there at first and was I that after a few months or after a year after like a year okay and I remember wanting to finally audition for the dance company and I did this like whole intent like this summer intensive the summer before like to prepare and I remember just feeling so not confident mm -hmm. that summer before and then I didn't I did not make the company that year and I was kind of upset but I I felt like I wasn't confident and I felt like my hip was maybe wasn't as 100% healed as mm. I thought. It would still get like every time it would I would like feel something, it would like give me a little bit of anxiety. Mm. But then once I finally got my confidence back, then the following year I auditioned. Year? Yeah, yeah. Then I auditioned and finally made it and oh, I felt like awesome. I, Yeah, but then COVID hit so it was virtual. Oh, COVID hit in your senior year. Uh, junior year actually, oh, but okay. then but the senior year company was all virtual. Wow. Yeah. So you guys still worked on stuff, but then you did, did you do yeah. virtual shows? Yeah. Okay. So it was really funny because we each were assigned a choreographer. I got super lucky. I got 
Stop doing that. I keep touching it. <laughs> it's okay. I got this really fun guest choreographer who was doing a music. So everyone had solo. So the name of the show was called Floor Plan, and we all did it in different rooms of our house. So they made it seem like it was like you were like going from room to room okay. in the house. And so mine was a musical theater solo, and I would have rehearsal with my choreographer on Zoom in my kitchen, and I would be like, she had me get like like fake food, and like I had like the um, oven mitts and like a tablecloth. She even incorporated my dogs into it, <laughs> and then it was this whole like virtual show, which was it was cute. I mean, I was a little bummed I didn't get the yeah. in person, but I did like during college still perform with the company because there was a. A class called repertory which is like it was a whole big um piece that was put together that you performed in the show with the company so I still had that experience but yeah the COVID one was interesting wow <laughs> yeah. you're like I finally I'm finally 100% healed I'm finally yeah. able to be in the company and then the world is like mm, but yeah I'm gonna do it a little differently and yeah like, oh my god yeah, yeah but you know crazy. I still had my community and yeah. we we still had a lot of fun uh, as together as we could be you know yeah so yeah and then you came <clears throat> back after college to LA and... yeah well there was actually a year where I stayed mm. I stayed in San Luis Obispo okay and that was to work on my company oh, okay and so wh- so I was working on my company that's when I got a job teaching dance to kids oh, which nice. was super fun it was like seven to nine year old jazz or something yeah it was really cute and then and that year actually even though I graduated my my dance professor who I'm still close with let me be in that repertory piece so I had like an extra year of performing (laughs) even though I wasn't a student anymore yeah so that was sweet and then yes then after that year of May of 2022 is when I moved back to LA and did your friend who you do the company with is she she also moved back to LA. Which then? friend? Well, don't you do the business with your friend? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I thought you were talking about dance company. Oh, sorry. No, the business. Oh, sh- Did she okay. also, because she also stayed there with you for that year and then moved back? Um, She was living in a town called Lompoc, which is like the small little town an hour from Slow. Okay. It was a boyfriend situation. Okay. <laughs> um, So, yeah, she was like basically living in San Luis Obispo. And then when I moved back, to LA. I think she moved back home to Santa Barbara, but then a few months later, or no, she, she went to Australia and traveled, but then she came and moved to LA. So she is in LA too now. Oh, you met her once actually. Oh. When I taught that class. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you met like for a second. I took Sarah's class once. Yeah. It was really fun. It was fun because that was her first a little pop-up C-Spot. Yeah. It's really one thing that's cool. There's a lot of cool things about C-Spot, the dance studio in Culver City, but they tend to let, like... Well, I mean, Sarah's taught before, but they tend to just, like, uh, have opportunities for teachers to do, like, pop-up classes and stuff like that to, like, try it out. And so I think it was it was for Feature Friday, right? Yeah, it so was they do, fun. like, $5 Feature Friday, so you only have to pay $5 for class, and they have just, like, a pop-up teacher. So Sarah did uh, one of those, and that was really fun. I went to it. Aww, and the dance was, was really so cute. <laughs> it was Ariana Grande, right? Yeah. Um, uh, what's it called? Seven Rings. Seven Rings. Yeah. So it was fun. So <laughs> I enjoyed that. And then I guess, yeah, you're, so your business partner Yeah, Maddie, there. she came. So, yeah, she she danced. I tried, I tried to get her to come to dance with me. Because <laughs> she was a dancer with you at yeah, school, well, right? No, actually. Oh. she Her background's in, in gymnastics. So, oh, but, oh, that's but right. But she did actually dance a little bit in college. But we never were in a class together. Okay. But... Yeah, she's a good dancer. I'm trying to get her to come more. So, yeah. you know, if you're watching this, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and your guys, what's the name of your company? It's called Highlight. So it stands for High Intensity Low Impact Training Exercise. So yeah. H-I-L-I-T-E. And that was sort of inspired by your dancing and also like your hip stuff too? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. So I feel like dancing is what inspired my love for overall fitness And I feel like that goes the same for Maddie. Like, she's always been into gymnastics and weightlifting and all of that. And so we were strangers first. We met at the startup competition, basically. But we both, um, we had to, like, pitch our ideas to the audience. And we both had different ideas, but they were similar. Very different than what we're doing now. But essentially, we both wanted to make fitness fun was our original thing. So we decided to 
come together. And then we both realized that we've had injuries due to high impact stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of um, workouts are very high intensity, which like dance, for example, I mean, I'm still going to keep dancing. (laughs) But in terms of like um, weight training and things like that, that could be really hurtful on the body so we wanted to come up with like a methodology and equipment that made it safer on the body yeah so that's what we're doing now so yeah definitely was inspired by dance in my hip for sure yeah I love that you're doing I love that everything you're doing has some sort of cohesion like um no it's a little scattered but I try to keep that I mean it's like everything's kind of related to your love for like dance and exercise and the body and so you're just like using all your gifts. You're like, Aww. I have this company to help people get less injured. And then I'm going to medical school to help people um, get over their injuries yeah. or also maybe not get yeah. injured um, and to help dancers. And then you're also like available to teach and maybe you will get a dance job. You know, yeah. it's I love your attitude because I feel like it's just like Aww. it's positive Thanks. and it's just like you're exploring like all the opportunities and to help others or to have joy or be a part of different teams and stuff so and I feel like that's just like Aww. who you are like every Aww, time I see you come so nice. to class, like if I see if I see you walk in a couple minutes late and I'm already like stretching I'm like, <laughs> I just get like I just have all this joy when I Aww, see Sarah I, have joy like, when I, see you I too. feel like you're so full of joy so Aww, like I so sweet. can't like not have joy when I see you. no you're full of joy I I actually when I went to dance last night and you weren't there I, I felt I felt an emptiness oh no <laughs> I know I, I used to I used to feel that when you weren't there but then it was kind of like she wasn't there every week because she (laughs) obviously has a million other things on her plate but no I'm I'm Um, trying to go more but thank you for saying that because sometimes I think I I sometimes I'm very um I feel like I'm doing like I get like scatterbrained and and I uh, there's a lot of times where I'm like what am I doing with my life where I feel like everyone has that but sometimes I think like I love dance so much why aren't I trying to pursue it but I think like it's still in me and what I'm doing I'm trying to like keep it alive and like I've always danced like very heavily like so many hours a week and like now it's not that often which is like weird for me because I have so much other stuff going on but I'm so inspired by you and how many classes you take and how you decided like later in life not that much later but (laughs) to do it and that you've pursued it and become so incredible and are doing all these classes that always inspires me Aw, you're how many classes do you mostly just do Tuesdays or do you do other classes I do I mostly just do Tuesdays Zach's class and that and um I try to get to ballet every Sunday at oh, right. West Side. And, okay, my one regret I have is never doing point. And I just got mm. point shoes, and I'm going to start adult beginner point at West Side. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited. So I'm I'm probably going to try to do Sundays with that, too. Okay. And then I try to go to Angel's um, street, street Jazz Jazz Street Jazz, jazz Angel on at Friday. Spot. I've gone here yeah. and there. Um, but I really... Do, I, feel, I feel like time is running out before I go to medical school. I do this because it's not like I'm dying, but like, <laughs> but I want to I want to get in a lot of classes before I go to medical school because I do plan to continue dancing there. Like I already found a dance studio where I think I'm going. Yeah. But I want to get in as many classes here while I'm in LA. So I I'm know. trying to do more. And just try to remember your last experience when you were switching dance communities, that it was hard at first. Yes, that's but a But then it became reminder. okay. So even though I, <laughs> I kind of want you to just cry about it and come back. But <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I don't want you to do I want you to do what you're supposed to do um, with your life. But I hope that once you're finally done with medical school, I hope that God opens a job for you in LA to come back here. Yes, me too. And be part of this dance community me again. Too. Because... I am really going to miss you. I, like, really, it's, once it hits me, I'm going to be, feel really sad about it. It just hasn't, like, totally hit me yeah, yet. Yeah, it hasn't but, hit me yet either. I'm like, oh. Um, it's a, it is important. Just, like, it's so fun to make, like, doing dance was never about building friendships for me. I like friendships, but that was uh-huh. never part of why I was doing it. But once it starts to happen, you're like, oh, it's so important. So when I do miss a regular class, I'm like... I think I'm supposed to go to this other class today, but, like, I feel so (laughs) sad about not seeing my friends. And, like, even though I know that if I go to another class, I'll eventually make friends there, too. 
even at more intense studios, you do still eventually start to make friends. It might yeah. take a little longer yeah. at some of those studios that are more competitive. Yeah. But. I feel like everyone has, you automatically have something in common with everyone yeah. in the room. And that's really cool. Yeah. Um, Last question for you, Sarah. Thank you mm-hmm. so much. You shared so many awesome things. Um, mm-hmm. Have you ever gotten discouraged about dance? And mm. what what kind of I mean maybe it was like the injury time Uh but or but is was there ever a different thing that got you discouraged about dance and like what did you do what what keeps you going because obviously you're still going with it yeah okay so the injury thing actually made me more motivated I think I remember running into some like random family friend or I don't I don't even remember who it was but like at a restaurant when I was like had my brace and my crutches and and the he said to me he's like so, like, are you going to dance again or you're just going to stop because of this injury? I was like, excuse me? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you're like, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I was like, why would I just stop? Like, I'm not, like, crippled forever. <laughs> so that was funny. But I think, so most of my life, I actually haven't really ever gotten that burnt out. Mm. Um, I've been very fortunate to have like always a supportive dance community and supportive dance teachers which I feel like helped a lot with that my whole life which is I feel like kind of rare um yeah not to say that's rare I mean dance dance teachers are great but I feel like every once in a while you hear people who are like oh I had this one experience yeah anyway it's always been a very good experience but I will say the one time I did feel very burnt out was during COVID Mm. um because so I was a dance minor um as mentioned and that was also when I was in the company so I was very excited to be in the company and I I I was grateful that through COVID I still had access to these dance classes and like dance classes I even had to take I I was grateful for that because I I knew um I don't know if I didn't have that like you were you I know you loved it you were taking all these classes um (laughs) I but was I taking all my New York virtual yeah. classes. I was like, oh my gosh, New York came to me in LA. Yeah. This is my dream. <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember like taking advantage of some of that stuff too. Like along with my the online classes I had to do for school. I I took Tyler Peck's. Did you ever take that on Instagram? She would always No, because I didn't even know who she was till oh. like some months ago. Okay, so. okay. Yeah, I would do that sometimes. But I just remember feeling like I remember talking to my friends and being like, we feel like we're dance majors. We're just dancing all the time, which was kind of cool in a way because I was like, oh, I'm dancing a lot. But it was so I was taking like one or I think I was enrolled in one dance class, um, like just a regular dance class that was twice a week for about two hours. And then I was in the company. So I had my rehearsal for that weekly. And then we also had company class weekly. And then I was in. I was choreographing a virtual piece for a show and then I was in I was in three pieces and each of those were like give or take no more than two hours a week because like when I'm filming myself I'm very critical of myself I keep touching the microphone (laughs) so like I remember for one of my classes our teacher would give us feedback like, she would record herself telling us feedback. Like, we would submit, um, we, there would always be, like, some kind of exercise we had to do, okay. like, a warm-up type thing to submit, and a combo, which was great. Like, I was grateful that we got feedback, because I think that was really cool to have individual feedback during COVID, but at the same time, I was so critical of myself when I recorded myself, and I would want it to look perfect, which, like, it's never going to look perfect. So yeah. I would spend hours re-recording myself oh, over and over and over. And and for the showcase, same thing, recording myself over and over and over. And we'd have to record different angles, which, like, in a way that was cool. It, it taught me how to dance for the camera a little bit. Um, not that I was trying to do that. <laughs> but, I, but I feel like I used to when they took the cameras out in class. I think you said this, too. Like, I used to just, like, forget it when I saw the camera. And yeah. now... I feel more confident when they take the camera out and like maybe it's because of that. But anyway, I was feeling extremely burnt out from dance during COVID, which made me sad because I knew how much I loved it. But I just I remember um, my some of my dance friends and I, we decided after like so many months of this um, to go to this grass field um, 
because so, some dance classes were asynchronous and some were synchronous. For one of our synchronous classes, I remember we went to a grass field on campus and we all stood so far from each other with our computers in front of us and we would take class at the same time. Wow. Yeah. And so that was really special. That's so, cool. So I think that's one of the things that helped me get over it is to like find ways to still, I think community has always yeah. been really big for me for dance. So, and it was funny. Like I remember once, like there were times where like there was the, like a, a lawn, like a guy with a lawn mower, and like it was loud or like <laughs> once it rained the night before and we were like slipping in the mud and, and everyone was laughing or like I stepped on a bee once and it was like, <laughs> oh there's all these things we're dealing with that you would never think yeah. you would do with dance. Yeah. Um, and then one of my friends started, it was like a, a dance company, but it was really just us getting together and dancing outside. So I remember it was so funny. We would meet in this park at night when it was pitch black and there was one light there and it like felt so sketchy, but we were all just dancing together outside. <laughs> and that, I mean, you know, sometimes it was cold and, but I don't know, things like that helped me get through it. So I think when I have felt, um, like down or burnt out, like talking to my dance people and yeah. bringing that community together and like reminding myself why I love doing what I'm doing. And like, even like, I mean, this is separate from COVID, but like even taking this class, I feel like that we just took, like we yeah. sparked something in me because I feel like I've just fallen into a habit of like taking the same classes and I took this and I was like oh my god there I love the classes I'm taking really but there, yeah. yeah there's so many styles out there and teachers so I know that's one of my biggest it gets me discouraged when there's so many classes at the same time that are also amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> like I'm like but I need to be here and here because I love this and this like literally in LA right now I feel like sometimes there's like could be like three classes I want to be at that I actually know of. I'm sure there's actually more than that. Yeah, if there's I knew so them many. All. But sometimes there's literally three that I even know that I'm like, I actually would like to be at all three of these right now tonight. Yeah, um, you're amazing. But you're how many How many do you take right now? Right now, it's probably about 10 a That's week. That's amazing. But praying that somehow I'm able to keep going like that. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, that would be discouraging, just like trying to dance during COVID. And I, like, I know what you mean with like setting up the video, doing the video so many times. I, I mean, I loved all the New York dancing. I was doing the virtual dancing, but I also did that too. I was always like trying to take videos of myself and setting yeah. them up, setting it up a million times. And like, it wasn't for like a grade at least. So I didn't have that pressure, but I did still feel my own pressure. I was putting on myself, like I need to get this perfect because I went to send, I was like working privately with a teacher in New York and I wanted to like send him my videos and like get them better. Yeah. And, Oh my gosh, it was a lot of work and I also didn't want to bother my roommate. So I'm going to do yes, it early in the morning. Or, like, yeah. It was just a lot. It wasn't like I didn't like it because I did like it, but it was a lot. And then I also got an overuse injury from how much right. dancing I was yeah. doing. Because even with how much I'm doing now, it it still isn't as much as I did during the yeah. pandemic. And I yeah. think a lot of, I learned that a lot of people came out of the pandemic with injuries for different reasons. Yeah. Either because they were dancing too much and like on right. a bad floor that wasn't uh -huh. like a sprung floor or whatever. Yeah. Or because they went st or they weren't dancing enough and then went straight back into dance right. too fast and got yeah. injured. So I think a lot of injuries were kind of coming out of COVID. Yeah, and I think I was dancing more than usual during COVID too just because yeah. I was doing it over and over. And like you said, yeah. you guys felt like you were like dance majors or whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess just like your advice would probably be just be like stay in community. It seems like any time you could have gotten discouraged with your injury or with COVID, yeah. like you found your place kind of in the dance community again. Yeah, I think like so. that's like a good way to stay encouraged. Yeah, because those are the people generally who understand you. Not that other people don't. Like, of course, <laughs> there's other people outside of that. But I don't know. I've always found comfort in a dance studio or with dance people. Like, I, it just always feels like, like I don't know. I've, I've studied abroad and stuff, and I've always, like, found a dance studio there. Mm, like, yeah. I don't know. It's just comforting. It kind of brings you back to yeah. like, you're with you're automatically with people who love this thing that you yeah, love. Yeah, exactly. Is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being on my podcast. It's awesome you for to have you. Me. I feel like Sarah is 
might be my first, I don't know if she's the first one, but I think she might be my first interviewee that actually like is a huge fan of my podcast. Yeah. Okay. I'm a huge fan of Tracy's podcast. Like when we got into the car, I was like, it's the podcast car, the podcast microphone. (laughs) And I was telling Tracy, I listen to her podcast when I'm driving, when I'm doing laundry and when I'm getting ready in the morning or getting ready for bed. So those are, those are really good times because it keeps me entertained. Well, I'm doing otherwise boring things. So Literally, you, she Tracy. told me it's she's been so encouraging to me because, you know, I just started this podcast not that long ago, but we now have like 10 episodes or something. And she was huh. telling me in class the other day, like, oh, I started doing singing vo- vocal warm up in, <laughs> in my car because you talked about how you do that in your podcast. You're like, And since I already listened to all your podcast episodes, I had nothing to do in the car. So I started doing vocal warm up. And I don't sing. I was like, that is the best, like, encouragement I have received since I started this podcast. <laughs> like, I ran out of podcast episodes, so I started doing vocal warm <laughs> because you talked about that in your podcast. I was wow. like, wow, you're just encouraging to me so much. And and even before I started this podcast, Sarah was always really encouraging to me in class. Like, I, my group, we would just be going in groups, and my group would go, and Sarah would be like, that was, <laughs> you did so good. <laughs> Well, it's true because, like, even from, like, when we first met, which was probably, what, like, a year more? Probably around a year or something. Yeah. Like, the amount that Tracy has improved is, like, you're amazing. Like, you're going and, like, standing in the front, even if you didn't want to, (laughs) in, in these classes, and you're killing it. And a lot of people, especially when they start dance, even if it's, like, in their, when they're teens, like, a lot of people start when they're younger and a lot of people are like too intimidated to start even when they're a teenager and the Mm -hmm. fact that you decided that you love dance and you wanted to dance and you just started doing it and taking all these classes and you practice at home and no one's no one's making you like when you grow up dancing I mean no one was making me but you know when you're like signed up for specific classes but like it's all you and you're pushing yourself and that really inspires me I actually Mm -hmm. think about that all the time like you practice at home and you find all these studios and like you decided you wanted to do it and be good at that, and that's what you're doing. So that's amazing. Aww. Well, we inspire each other. <laughs> it's so hard for me to end these podcasts because I just want to keep talking. I'm like, there's so much more to talk about. But anyways, it's so great to have you on the show. <laughs> I'd be here. Um, so hope you guys enjoy learning about Sarah's dance journey. Um, I'll put her Instagram in the notes if you want to follow her more. Well, if she wants me to. Yeah, sure. (laughs) Or her company, and you can learn more about that. Um, But thank you for listening. Follow, like, subscribe, all those things. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Yay. That was fun. (laughs)